Declaration of Independence is our nation's birth certificate. It sets forth the philosophy of our country. It is also noteworthy that every single right or grievance written in the Declaration had been preached from the pulpit prior to, the, to when the Declaration was, was written and signed. Basically, the Declaration of Independence is a set of sermon topics. The Declaration of Independence concludes in the last paragraph by appealing to the supreme judge of the world. That can only be our Lord and Father. But we have those in service in the government that continue to push to turn portions of God's word into political issues, thereby causing churches to break the law if they speak on it. Unfortunately, I, and I, I suspect that many of you as well, are continuing to read and see videos where Christians are supporting these moves in government. So we might as well start tearing chapters of the Bible out of our book, because if we speak on it, we're going to be breaking the law, even in churches. Christians cannot remain silent. Christians should not wait until election seasons to be engaged and involved. The Lord tells us in Isaiah 56.10, it's a warning, that his leaders of his people are blind and ignorant like watchdogs with no bark. How would you feel if your human father felt about you that way? What would you do, what could you do to change his mind? The number of messages and issues and, and, and problems, and there, there's a lot of them, it's extremely overwhelming, and you can feel like a fish out of water. So, so what and how? How do I deal with all of this? Well, the truth is that not every issue is going to resonate with you. Not every issue is going to hold a place in your heart. It's not your calling. It's not where the Lord wants you to focus. But there are those that will. And then that's a, that's, follow, think of that as a, as a leading, you know, from the Holy Spirit to say, you need to, to do something about this. So when you hear or you read about something that's happening in our culture, be it government or at whatever level or, or something else, and it resonates with you, then I would encourage you to meditate on it for a bit. Think about it. Um, and then if you're, if you're still excited about it, if it still resonates with you, then learn all you can about it. Study that issue, every aspect and every angle. And as you do this, you'll find that you're starting to get informed. You've gained knowledge. And when you do that long enough, you are now prepared. You are now ready and you're vigilant. And then you, are, you, can, now, now, you can now respond accurately and with spec and, and, and specifically in prayer and in your activities. We absolutely need Christians involved in the actual cultural and political processes. We need to help shape policy. And as we do this, we always keep one eye on the Lord and trusting him. But the only thing needed for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. So if you are okay with things getting worse, then do nothing. If you are not okay with things getting worse, then do something. The role of the church and the role of the Christian are not the same thing. The church needs to be more careful than the Christians that make up the church as we interact in our communities and society. I do believe uh, in, 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 the, in the argument, or, or um, I, I believe that pastors must be focused on the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I do not believe that pastors should be avoiding topics about our national climate or current events. As a matter of fact, I believe it to be dangerous. Recall the story from Jeremiah where we had Jews that were exiled in Babylon and their lives were miserable because they refused to pray for their government and to speak out about issues that had been impacting their community. It's been said that when some, by some ministers and pastors, unfortunately, that when pastors dabble in politics, he is prostituting himself away from the Gospels. 
This could be not be further from the truth. And history proves this. If they don't do it, then our culture suffers. When pastors and ministers are involved, then our culture thrives. History will show that. Our culture is in crisis, and it is because of influential ministers that have been sharing the wrong message and driving Christians away from culture. What about the pastors that don't speak out about politics and culture because they are afraid of the government or they are afraid that they will offend some of their constituents? Fear is faith too. Some believe that the church thrives best when it is under persecution. I had shared earlier about uh, in another video about my friend that had written a blog that perhaps we need this persecution to come because it appears that only then is when the church finally wakes up and comes out. If you look at the churches of the first, second, and third centuries, right, they were persecuted way more heavily than what we're going through today. So maybe we need to be persecuted. I don't know. Who is he that will harm you if you follow what is good? When they defame you, those who revile your good conduct in Christ, they will eventually be ashamed. 